All right, so uh, today, uh, a lot of what we do today is just going to be um, vocabulary, so uh, bear with the videos, pause as you need uh, to fill you out, fill out your notes, um, but we'll guide through exactly what's going on here. Uh, so chapter one is all about voting, um, and we're going to do two sections by video today. Uh, the first one, section 1.1, is preference ballots and preference schedules, okay? And the objectives today, by the end of uh, this class, you have to be able to construct and interpret a preference schedule for an election involving preference ballots, okay? So this is kind of, uh, we're starting to look at voting and there are many different ways that we can take votes and count votes. Um, all of our voting is going to involve preference ballots, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Okay, so we're we'll jump right in with a example one. The Math Appreciation Society is a student-run, I don't know why that N is cut off, but it's a student-run organization um, dedicated to fostering the enjoyment and appreciation of mathematics among Waterford High School students. 2017 annual election, there were four candidates running for president. They are Amy, Brian, Cindy, and Dave. We're going to call them candidates A, B, C, and D for short. So the first thing we need to recognize is that this election utilizes a preference ballot. Uh, so what is a preference ballot? Well, here's what a preference ballot is. A preference ballot is a ballot in which the voters are asked to rank the candidates in order of preference. So on a preference ballot, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to have however many slots for however many candidates you, you're picking. So in this example, you're going to have four different slots and you have to choose, I choose A first, B is my second, C is my third, and D is my last place vote. A meaning you like that candidate the most, and D meaning you like that candidate the least. Okay? Now, all of our ballots are preference ballots. In addition to that, they're all linear ballots. And linear ballots means that on my particular ballot, as a voter, I can't say that I like Amy and Brian the same. I have to choose Amy first or Brian second or Brian first, Amy second. I am not allowed to choose a tie on my individual ballot. That's not to say that we can't have a tie in an election. We just can't have a tie on the ballot. All right, so the votes are cast. And here are all of the different ballots for the Math Appreciation Society. Okay, these are all the different ballots that were collected. Um, and if you look at these ballots uh, quickly, we can see that many of the ballots are repeats. Okay, for example, I highlighted in yellow here all of the ballots that people chose A is their first choice, B is their second, C is their third, and D is their fourth. Okay, so if we look at these ballots, we can tell that uh, a lot of them are repeats. So what we want to do is we want to create uh, a preference schedule. Okay, we're going to create a preference schedule that uh, will help simplify our ballots. Okay, so when we collect, a, when we create a preference schedule, notice each row, right, each row is going to be for first place, second place, third place, and fourth place. And what you do is you go through this and you find all of the different uh, types of ballots. We will start with this first one that I have highlighted. All of the ballots that have A in first place, B in second place, C in third place, and D in fourth place. What we need to do is we need to find all the ballots that have that order of choices and we count up how many there are. So I've already highlighted this first one so we can count them up. Uh, one, whoop, there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There are 14 voters, 14 people, rank their candidates this way. And what we do is we go through and we just highlight uh, all of the different ways in which candidates were chosen. My next way, if you will, uh, my next ballot that I'm going to look at is C first, B second, then D, then A. So I'm looking for all of these that are C, B, to D, to A. Let me make sure this this will work here. Uh, I want a highlighter. There it is. So I'm looking for C, B, D, and A. That's this one. C, B, D, and A. This one. C, B, D, and A. C, B, D, and A. I'm looking for all the ballots that look the same. C, B, D, and A. All the C, B, D, and A's. I'm just going through and I'm highlighting them all. C, B, D, and A. C, B, D, and A. Perfect. So I've highlighted all of the ballots that chose C, then B, then D, then A. So C, B, D, and A. And I'm going to count those up. So I'm just counting up the red ones. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 people chose, uh, chose the ballots in that order, C, B, D, and A. The next ballot I'm going to look at. Now, important for me to point out here, the reason that I chose C, B, D, A next is because I know the answer to this. I know that... Uh, I had I was going to have 10. The next type of ballot I choose, I know is going to be less than 10. It's actually going to be 8. But uh, when you're doing this for the first time, what you would do is it doesn't matter the order in which you choose the ballots, right? So our next ballot that we're going to look at is D, C, B, and A. So D in first place, C in second place, B in third place, and A in last place. Okay, now I'm going to highlight again. I'm going to choose a different color highlighter, maybe pink. Okay, I think that's pink. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to go through, and I'm going to choose all the D, C, B, and A. So I'm looking for D, C, B, and A. There's one. D, C, B, and A. There's another. D, C, B, and A. There's a third. D, C, B, and A. 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 And D, C, B, and A. Now I count up all of those ballots. And I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight voters created a preference ballot in that order. My next order is B, D, C, and A. B, D, C, A. I go back in. I'm going to highlight now all of the B, D, C, A. BDCA, 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 BDCA. Perfect. I count them up. I have one, two, three, four people chose that order. And then last, I only have one ballot left, and that is. C, D, B, A, B, A, and only one voter chose that order. So when we look at this, it's going to be, once we build a preference schedule, what we did is, this is called a preference schedule. Once we build this preference schedule, what we're going to find out is it's really easy then to 
make choices and and understand who wins elections based on different ways to count the votes. So the key, the absolute key here is going to be the ability to successfully build this preference schedule um, from a collection of ballots. Okay, it's not difficult. It's a little tedious, um, but it's it's something that you're going to have to be able to do. Okay, so a couple things about counting votes in a preference schedule. Uh, one of the first things is that a voter's preferences are transitive. So what does that mean? A voter's preferences are transitive. Well, that means that a voter who prefers candidate A over candidate B and prefers B over C automatically prefers A over C. So if we look at this ballot, A, B, C, and D, notice A, this person, this voter chose A as their first place vote. If B is their second and C is their third, if they chose B higher than C, if A is already higher than B, then A must be higher than C, right? That's all that means, okay? The second thing to realize is that uh, the preferences of a voter are not affected by the elimination of one or more of the candidates. So, for example, a voter who prefers candidate C over candidate B and B over D will still prefer C over D if B is eliminated. In other words, if we look at this ballot, okay, let's suppose this is how I filled out my ballot and then the night after the election while we're still counting votes, candidate B decides, you know what, I'm not going to run. So we can scratch candidate B, and all that means is each one of these candidates at the bottom bump up. So just because B dropped out doesn't mean that it changes my preferences at all. Okay, and that's really it. That is the first section of, uh, that's the very first section of our voter uh, unit. Um, a lot of vocabulary, and it's something that we're going to talk about constantly. Um, so don't try to memorize anything. And remember, you're going to have access to your notes when we take the tests and quizzes.